Hello and welcome. This is for those of you guys who might have missed our Thursday where we talked a little bit about uh, the age of rocks, relative dating, absolute dating, some of the things that have to do with how do we know how old the earth is. And so scientists have kind of come up with some ideas based on how we can tell if something's old or if something's young. And these ideas I want to share with you, and if you weren't in class on Thursday or if you were in class and you did the quizdom with me, but you're still not sure, then this is kind of a review for you or maybe some new information. One of the things that we talked about was how do scientists know the ages of rocks? Well, we don't know for sure, for sure, because no rock comes with a birth certificate saying this is when I was born and this is my birthday. But we've come up with some ideas of maybe how we can formulate theories of how old possibly rocks could be. And the ways that we do that and the ways that scientists have come up with are two things. First is I come up with something with a relative age dating. Now, relative meaning we think relative to other rocks around, we think this one might be a certain age. Absolute means, well, we think this one might be an absolute number as far as we can give it a number to think where this rock might have been created or what year, how long ago it might have been created. And I wanted to show you a little bit about how that is. So in our class, we actually turned this into a quiz using our quizdoms. And one of the questions I ask you is, so what two methods do we use for dating rocks? And as you can see, relative and absolute was the answer. So relative age dating and absolute age dating are the two methods we use for dating rocks. Well, what rock layer would be considered the oldest? Well, if we look at this one here at the very top, this is kind of telling us a story that maybe a layer of sediment was deposited. So maybe there was some sand and gravel and all sorts of stuff that was laid into this little ravine here, this little valley. And then maybe some time later, a whole nother type of sand and sediment was laid down on top of it. Okay, maybe a little bit time later, we go down here to this third one. And another type of sand, rocks, stuff was laid down on top of that one. And pretty soon we say, wait a second, right through all three of these layers, years later, some magma came up from the earth and shot right through them. How do we know which is old and which is young? Well, A, up here at the top, this was the first layer that was laid down. Then on top of that one was another layer. So we'd say, well, wait a second. The one laid down on top must have been laid down at a younger date because the green was there first. Then came the yellow. And then after that came the purple. So in order, we would say the oldest or the one that came first would have been the green. Relative age dating. To determine the relative age of rocks, geologists start with the idea that unless something disturbed sedimentary rock layers, remember sedimentary meaning bits of sediment or bits of rocks and, and things like that that have been pushed together and cemented together to make a rock. Unless something disturbed it, the newer rock layers will be on top of the older ones. Hmm. Unless we have this thing where maybe magma shot through all three layers. Then we'd say, ooh, that probably happened afterwards because it went through all three layers. It wasn't there before. Well, if you looked at this, kind of looks like a major layer cake here, doesn't it? Like a piece of cake. Which layer would scientists consider to be the oldest? Say it in your head. Is it A, B, C, D, E, or F? Oh, if you said A, you are correct. That would be the oldest. It's the bottom layer. It's the one that was laid down first. Well, what about here? A, B, C, D, E, F are your layers again. What layer would be older? Would you say layer C in the red or layer E? Say it in your head. Oh, you're right. If you said layer C, this one would be older. It was laid down first and then D and then E on top of it. What layer would be younger, do you think? Which one would be younger? Would layer D be younger or would layer B be younger? Think of the answer in your head. Oh, you said D, hopefully. 
That's right, D is on top of B. So B was laid down and then C and then D. So D would be younger. It was laid down after B. What layer would scientists consider to be the youngest rock in this whole layering? Think of the answer in your head for a second. Hopefully you said F right here at the top. A, B, C, D, E, these were all laid down and then F is the youngest. This is the one that's being built up right now. What rock layer would be considered the oldest layer? in all of these layers. Hopefully you're thinking A, because that's the one that was laid down first. And if you said that, you're right. What two methods do we use for dating rocks again? Hopefully you said B and C, because there's two methods, relative age dating and absolute age dating. Well, we just talked about relative age dating, but let's look at absolute dating. With absolute age dating, you get a real age in actual years. The age can also be based on radioactive decay or it could be based on fossils. How do we come up with this? Well, there are two things absolute dating is based on. Do you remember what two of those were? Radioactive decay, A, and fossils found within the layers, C. Radioactive decay means we can get a rock and we can look at a sample of it and realize, oh my goodness, this rock is made up of uranium elements. And then we can find another rock and we could say, oh wow, this one has uranium and it has lead. Well, we might know that the uranium rock that was all uranium, we might know about when that was created, when that was, when that was cool and hardened. We'd go, huh. Then we'd see another rock like it, but we know that this one might be older, and we'd realize sometimes uranium starts to change over time into lead. We'd say, wow, half of this rock is lead, half of it is uranium, it's changed. And we'd give this name the name of a half-life. We'd say, wow, this is a half-life right here. Half of this has changed from uranium to lead. And it's going to keep changing uranium to lead until the whole thing gets changed to lead. And we could start to come up with some dates based on how much time we think it takes for uranium to change into lead. And how much time we think it took for the uranium in this rock to change to lead. And how much time it'll take for the uranium left to change to lead again. Another idea is fossil dating. We can look into layers of the earth, deep down, shallow. And in this, we can say, huh, some stuff isn't alive anymore. That must have been pretty old. There must have been a chance that it was extinct at some point. And as we get up through the layers, we might find a layer of rock that's all the same all around the world. And in that layer of rock, we might find a fossil that's the same and go, huh, that layer of rock, when it was made, had that fossil in it, but nowhere else do we find that fossil. I'll bet you that fossil existed when that rock was made. And so we'll use fossil dating sometimes to date rocks. Fossils found in different outcrops. Well, yeah, different places in the world, we find different fossils all throughout different layers. However, which layer is the oldest layer? Well, Mr. Jensen, E, that bottom layer, which is blue, no matter where we go, we know the bottom is the oldest. Well, which layer is the youngest layer? Oh, Mr. Jensen, the top layer is the youngest. That was the last one to be laid down. You're right. The law of superposition. Let me play this for you. The law of superposition states that in an undisturbed sequence of rocks, the oldest rocks are on the bottom and the youngest rocks are on top. We can compare this to an analogy of a laundry basket. Each day as you add dirty clothes to that laundry hamper, the layers stack one on top of the other. And as long as this stack is not disturbed, the oldest clothes will be on the bottom and the youngest will be on the top. The same is true with any undisturbed rock sequence. The oldest rocks are on the bottom and the youngest are on top. Let's now look at the law of cross-cutting. 
This law states that any feature that cuts across the sequence of rocks is younger than everything it cuts. Some of the features that cut across the rock sequence may be a fault or an igneous intrusion, either a dike or a batholith. And these features are younger than any part of the sequence they cut across. Let's compare the law of cross-cutting to tracks in snow or in sand. In this scenario, the older tracks will be covered by younger tracks. This allows us to determine the relative age of those tracks, where those that are on top or are not covered by anything are the youngest, and those that are covered by the most are the oldest. This is also true with any rock sequence with cross-cutting features. Those features are younger. All right, so the basic idea of cross-cutting features is that anytime something goes across or through all those layers, old on the bottom, young on the top, if something goes through them, we're saying that thing that goes through them is younger. So you can see they're pointing younger or youngest with the things that are happening. Which is older? Would you say that the sandstone or the limestone is older? Sandstone here or limestone? Oh, if you said sandstone, you're correct. It's below the limestone, so it's older. Which one is older, the mudstone or the siltstone? If you said siltstone, you're correct. It's below the mudstone. We use something that we call index fossils. And what this is, is an index fossil is a fossil we look for. And what we're looking for is we're looking for different layers of rocks all the way through the earth in different areas. And then we're studying the fossils that we find in there. If there's a fossil that we find that exists no matter where we're at in the same layer all over, but nowhere else or no other layer, we start to call that an index fossil, meaning, hey, if you're in this layer of rock, there's a pretty good indication you're going to find this fossil. And so we'll go different places in the world. We'll find a layer of rock spread out all over areas. And we'll find one fossil that only exists in that one layer. And maybe it was extinct after that. We're not sure, but what we're finding is it's only in that layer of rock. So we go, huh, well, that's kind of cool. We can call this an index fossil. And we can start to see that if we find a fossil, we're pretty sure we know what layer of rock it's in. Or a layer of rock, we're pretty sure what fossil we might find in that layer of rock. And that'll give us a basic time of what we think might exist as far as when that rock or that fossil existed. If we've come up with a pretty good solution on that, then we might use that as index fossils to tell us the age of that rock. Here's an example. A, B, C, and D at the bottom. We've got fossils all throughout different cuts into the earth. Well, let's see if we can find a fossil that only exists in one layer, but it's always found throughout these cuts into the earth. Well, A is our best bet. B, we found in different layers. C, we found in different layers as well, and not in every single cut. And D is only in this one layer in this one cut. But A happens only in one layer, but in all the different cuts. And we go, ah, oh, that's considered what we would call an index fossil. Now, scientists call the time before they think life existed, they call it pre-Cambrian. Hmm. What does that mean? Pre means before, Cambrian means life. So if we think there's something that existed, like a rock, before life existed, we would call that the pre-Cambrian time. This is before we think life might have shown up on Earth. Well, scientists theorize, or they come up with this idea for an age for the Earth. And it's changed over the last 30 years. We've changed the age of the Earth from millions into now billions of years old. And scientists still, we kind of think and theorize through and have different ideas. Scientists theorize that right now, 2022, the age of the Earth might be 4.6 billion years old. Holy cow. 4.6 billion years old. Boy, that's a lot of years. This is, if you were to take a test here in a couple weeks, 
for the state and they asked you, hey, how old's the bit the how old is the earth? You would want to put down 4.6 billion years. That's the answer they're looking for. How do scientists think? How old do they think the earth might be? 4.6 billion years. Good job. Which layer is the oldest? Nice. D, you're figuring it out. Which layer is the youngest? Yeah, the top one, A. Which layer? Uh, which layer is the... Oh, I didn't write that right. Which layer was laid down second? What was the second layer that got laid down? Well, first one would have been D. Second one would have been C. Boy, bad sentence, Mr. Jensen. That's all we're going to do today. We're going to take a break. Thanks so much. Hopefully, we'll see you back in and we'll keep going over some of this stuff.